back eternally. Thankful God that God can give us a place to come to worship Him. I thank the Lord for that. Amen. Philippians yeah. chapter 4. And we're going to read a few verses, beginning verse 5, when we find a place. We'll begin reading. Let your moderation be known to all men. You can be, you can stand if you please. Let your moderation be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. And with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, and if there be any virtue, let, and if there be any praise, think of these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the peace of God shall be with you. Father, bless your reading tonight of your word, and yes. I pray God you will get to have liberty. May we help somebody in the day we're living. It will help us to lift up your name. Bless us, God. Help us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Here in the church, the Philippian church, we see here they, they had a lot of problems. They had a lot of disunity in the church. A lot of people were depressed because of the time and the persecution and the things that had been going on in their life and all around them. And this thing, this thing, robbed them of their joy and peace. Many people tonight, they're saved. But they live in a time they got so much anxiety in their, in their life, in their heart. Yeah. That it's robbed them of that joy that God intends for him, them and all of us to have. Paul was giving instruction here. On how we as God, them and us today as his children can how to keep peace in our life. How to keep unity in our life. That's why we have churches springing up all over the hillside. One little church, church here They'll have a little disagreement with one, some members and they'll leave and go by, rent a building and start a church out. I never understood. If God's people are right with God like they said, it shouldn't should be nobody get, did not get along. That's right. Amen. Amen. You thought right. about that? That's good. Right. But we see here, we see here he's telling us how to have peace in our life. I want to preach all night. I'll, I'll finish this and I'll, I'll cry because I'll finish it next Wednesday night. On the topic, how to have peace in your life in the world we live. How we can have peace in our life in the world we live in. You'd be surprised at the people if you really ask them, are you happy? A lot of them will say no. If you got peace of God, you have it. Amen. I guarantee you, if I take each individual one of you privately and ask you heart to heart, are you happy? There'd probably be a maybe maybe service and no, not really. Not that you're not saved, because but you've not got peace or too much stuff in your life. Anxiety and worry and doubt and trouble and just all other things working together that keeps you beat down. We'll stay beat down. See, the devil's job, he cannot get our soul, per se. Yeah. But he can tear us down and wear us out. Yeah. But how to have peace in the world in which we're living in? Paul, first of all, in verse 5, look at verse 5, he said, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. What 
we say in here, let me hold on a minute. I got to do something real quick. This thing here's got full of demons in you. Bless, Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I'll get y'all just help me here. Just a second. I'll get back with you. Bless the Lord. Aggravating thing. But we see here, as we read here, he tells us in verse 5. He said, let your moderation be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. He encourages us to have patience. Public with people. Now, you'd be surprised tonight, friends, at people that share the same church. Maybe not here, I don't think it's here. But a lot of the churches that don't have peace with each other. I've known that this is true. I was years ago, when I was young, I used to sing in the group of the church. And this girl got mad. This woman suddenly got mad. That you ain't talk to God's that church. So I went to and I said, I'll tell you what, don't call on us no more to sing. I said, she won't speak to me out. She won't get it right with God. And I'm not getting up here and saying and he can hinder the Holy Ghost. You say, preacher, why did you do that? Because I believe God wants us to display patience with people and other people in public. You know what Paul said here? He said here, that word moderation is what moderation means. It don't mean a practice, a moderate practice and moderate drinking, moderate adultery, and moderate adultery. That ain't what it means here. You see, a lot of people tonight, a lot of, a lot of these people that go to church, I don't as much as call them Christians, they believe in moderate drinking, go to the bar, they go to the, go to the, 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 the circle K and get them a case of beer or running up to the ABCC store and drinking them, get them a little bit. That, that don't mean they here. This word modern, I looked it up in the Greek because sometimes Greek can give you more, more greater meaning. That's where the New Testament was written from, the Greek, Greek text. That word, the moderation here simply means, it, it means being yielded. Or it means to have a, a have a patient mind. Or it simply means to be surrendered. Yeah. You see, it seemed here, if you look back in verse 2, that two ladies in the church were having a division because both of them wanted to come on their own way. And boy, you get two women like that, you want to back out of town because it's going to be bad. Amen. <laughs> But Paul told them, said, for the sake of peace, I'll be willing to say, hey, well, instead of arguing about it, just let it go. Preach, I ain't going to let it go. You will if you want to have peace. Yeah. Now, I'm not talking about it scripturally wrong. I'm not saying, there's so many little things that people get aggravated over. Mm -hmm. Maybe the color of the toilet paper in the, in, in, in the bathroom of the church, or the way the hymn books are laid out, or uh, the songs that's required. Little things like that. He said, just let it go. Let it go. Yeah. Moderation it shows this. It shows gentleness and consideration. It shows consideration and gentleness to other people. Now a lot of people got in their mind, I'm gonna do what I want to do. What is what you want to do and what God wants you to do. Yeah. We mm -hmm. see that's what he was talking about here. How to have peace in a world we're living in. One thing about it I found a long time ago, if you go looking for a fight with something, you get a fight on your hands. Amen. I ain't gonna go look for no fight. Hey, I don't want to, I don't like confrontation for you. No, that's right. There are many times that I bit my lip to keep from having confrontation. Yeah. Over these things like this. What does this do, preacher, if we do this? It, it, what it does here, it will it, 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 it'll bring peace in our lives. And it'll cool that hot temper we have. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand because I know some of you won't raise it, but I know you, some of you have hot tempers. <laughs> Somebody help me. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says that helps us to, if we, you, you ever notice this, and I've seen it many times. Somebody will be angry and start shouting, and I, you, you'll, you'll talk to them in a gentle and a calm way, and you'll see them a little, a little cool down. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You ever seen it? But see, a lot of folks, they don't do that. If they throw fire, they're going to pick up the fire right there. That ain't what he said here. Let your moderation be known, uh, be, be known in all men. 
Let your gentleness, let your kindness be named known to all men. That's how you keep peace in your yeah. life. Keep peace. That's good, bro. Some people say, yeah, I'll give in. If I do, I feel like I, I appear like I'm weak or we'll lose it. No, they show what kind of person you are. Amen. What kind of character you have. A lot of folks think they don't have no way. And a lot of folks are like this. They're like those poor Branton and Walmart. You ever been to Walmart and them youngins in there screaming and kicking because mama won't buy them a toy? Yeah. I would like to adopt that young for five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I guarantee you he wouldn't touch the toy when I got through with it. You ever seen that before? Oh yeah. But what he was saying here, we need we didn't see his shadow if I give in. People say, well, I give in. I, uh, no, when you when you when you when you serve God in meekness and mildness and moderation and you do it, people will say, hey, that man different. Well, that woman is the world. That goes against every bit of flesh. Everything the flesh stands for, that goes against. Our natural instinct is to do what? When people do us wrong. What our natural instinct is to strike back. Yeah. Yeah. But see, the moderate man, he don't. Man, I'm not saying he likes what, what happens, what's said to him, or how he's treated. But what he does, he'll hold his peace, hold his cool. You know what? You know what it was telling us to do that? And, and, and it shows you. It tells you in the Word of God here in this verse why we should do that. He said the last part of verse 5. He said, The Lord is at hand. That means, first of all, the Lord's by your side and He'll provide for you. So don't worry about your rights and getting away. God will take you. Mm -hmm. This is awful quiet. I wish you taking it in. That's good. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Psalm said it. Psalm 73, 28. He said, but it's good for me to draw when God near to God. I have put my trust in Him that I may declare all my works. Mm -hmm. It could mean this too. Listen to your friends. It could be death. It could also, they said the Lord is in heaven. It could mean that death is right at your death. Go stand. That you could go to be with the Lord at any time. None of us can be promised for tomorrow. You don't even know you'll get out of that church for tonight alive. Yeah, right. Man. Well, what does it mean? It means you need to be prepared all the time in all the aspects of our life. I guarantee you, you know, I don't know how, I don't know how, I don't know how my wife is living here. We should have lived. Somebody called said, We're coming to see you. And I ain't never seen a house cleaned up as fast. Mm -hmm. As, uh, I see it cleaned up. Yeah. And don't open a certain door. Because if you do, you'll be caught with an avalanche. Yeah. <laughs> but he said for us to be prepared and be ready at any time. Let our moderation be known unto all men. He said, The Lord is at hand. Let our moderation said, Let us be prepared because we can, we can leave here anytime, anytime. Any of us could be gone in a fit second. It also means that the Lord's coming soon, and He is coming soon. Yep. And when God, God tells us to do like that, to be my, hey, see, that's, there's one thing you need to remember, God's keeping a record. And God keeps the record book, and for our sacrifices and willingness, God will reward us for it. You see what I'm saying? It's all about having peace in the world we're living in. I mean, we can, we can, people, some people just live to cause conflict. Yeah. Some people just live to keep trouble going in their people's lives. Have you ever seen that? Oh, Amen. I know this ain't no shout message, but I'll tell you, I, I, it help us. Because yeah. we have peace with the things we, we can do to have peace. But we see, we're going to see you too here. Paul encouraged us to have patience. Second of all, look at verse number six. He said, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. What he said to be careful for nothing, he don't mean to be careless. He don't mean to be careless. Careful here means to be anxious or be troubled with cares or worry. It means to be maybe having a bad anxiety. They, some people are naturally born in words. Aren't they? Amen. 
Should I be wrong? But Paul was saying here, hey, he said here we ought to be careless. He said here that, that it means to be careless and be careful, be anxious for nothing. That means to be troubled when you care. He said, don't, don't be buried. People be beat down. They worry. And, 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 and you know what? A lot of worry is we have. Listen to me. A lot of things we worry about to happen, the psychologists say 80% of it don't even happen. Yeah. And we worry. And we all do. I do. You do. We do sometimes. All of us do. But Paul was trying to make a point. Don't let that worry rule your life. That's what he was trying to say here. Don't let it rule your life. Don't go to bed worrying about it. Wake up worrying about it. Give it to God. He said, pray that prayer. <coughs> Excuse me. <Bless> you. <coughs> you know what worry does to a person? It pulls them in all directions, don't it? Amen. It pulls them in all directions. Our faith pulls us in one direction, but that worry will pull. It's about like trying to pull it. We're about being pulled apart. Worry distracts people. And it tear them all to pieces emotionally. It will. You know people like that that, 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 that it don't take nothing to worry them to death. And you know what? Sometimes we I think that the devil uses that tool of, that, of worry to try to keep people down so they won't have peace in their life. And I believe that. I'm not saying that you're not going to worry. We all do worry. But Paul said, be anxious for that. Don't let it bother you so much with it. But it, it, it take that peace on your life. I mean, we all get concerned about things in our life. Bills to be paid and things to be taken care of our life. We all do. They said, be anxious for that. Because we own, we, we serve a God. He, he owns a cattle of a thousand hills. And he'll be there and then he ain't never failed. Yet. Amen. He Amen. Never Because we worry, our focus on the Lord will be, will be, will be hindered. We'll be focusing on other things. Stress causes a lot of damage in people's lives. It causes heart problems. It increases blood pressure that leads to the heart. It causes strokes. It causes cholesterol elevation. It causes, it causes a, a, a ulcers. It, it, it can lead to the heart and the arteries. It causes sugar levels to, to skyrocket, make you, might make you be a, a, a type 2 diabetic, they say. It, it weakens your immune system, and it makes you real easy to get sick. You knew that, and it's right. Because, you know, when you work, the digestion don't work right. Mm -hmm. You don't digest right. Some, some worried leave people. To not even eat it all much. And you know what Because it's so full of anxiety and worry. And that's a tool of the devil to try to beat you down, friend. Yeah. Paul was just saying this. See, all these things happen. People worry to death. Paul was saying enough to be anxious or worry about. There's a lot of people today worry about material things. And that robs them. They worry about calling. They don't think they got as much as they should have. You got exactly what God wants you to have, friend. Amen. 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 God wants you to have more. He'll give you more. If He That's don't, right. you'll be content. What stage you're in? Amen. That's right. Amen. But worry. Amen. Cause it. We worry over these things. It runs. Not even material things. People worry themselves to death. Somebody like Martha. People are like Martha in the Bible. They're anxious. Careful, Jesus said, "You careful and anxious about many things, Martha." Luke 22, 21, 34 says, Take heed to yourself, lest at any time your heart be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this world, and till that day come upon you, come upon you the word. And, and Matthew 13, 22, listen to this. He said, Also, he that received seed among the thorn, that is he that hears the word and the cares of this world, uh, and the deceitful of riches, choke the word, and he become unfruitful. You know what the care of the world a world will do to y'all? Do to me? It'll choke us to death. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It'll choke our living life out of us. Yeah. Yeah. We get weighing heavy on something and we'll lay that. That's all we think of. 
Hey, we'll we, 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 we see ourselves about breathing faster. Yeah. Yeah, and our heart gets beat faster. And we wide awake, laying in the middle of the night, can't sleep a worry. And that's what, that's what it does. Worry does that, friend. It'll choke us. It'll choke the life out of us. It'll bind us in and weigh us. Oh, it's one more worry. That word worry, English word worry, comes from a German word, means to choke, strangle, see by the throat with the teeth. That's what it means. It means it'll choke their very life out of you. God wants us to trust Him. That He'll take care of us. I told Brother Mike while I got a hospital bill yesterday, Brother Phil. $114,000 hospital bill. You worried? I ain't gonna lose the sleep. This last time I made last night. Amen. Amen. <laughs> God ain't never failed to fail yet. Right. Right. Of course, the issue paid a lot of it. But I ain't worried about it. We need to understand this tonight, friend. Hey, you know, why do we worry about it when we've got somebody who loves us? Son, son Jesus Christ to die for us, and he promised us he'd never leave and forsake us, and he'd supply our needs for right. right. Why should we worry? Amen. 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 Why should we? Yes. I'm his youngest. That's right. He loved you enough to send his son to die on That's Calvary. Right. Yes. He paid the yeah. ultimate price for yes, us. And if he paid that money for us, don't you yeah. think yeah. he'll take care of yes, us? Amen. Yes. 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 Amen. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He wants us to trust us to trust that he'll take care of us. And to be content what we already have in our life. It could be choked and strangled by our worries. These people today, these young people, you young people listen to me because y'all ain't got married, you need to listen hard to me tonight. You get married, don't you think you can get everything mom and daddy had in 40 something years in one more year? Yeah. These young folks get married, they go in debt up in eyeballs. <laughs> Can't pay the bills before you know it. They fuss and cuss with each other, throwing dishes at each other. Yeah. Before you know it, they're already divorced and not, and not even married no more. We need to understand, folks, amen. We need to understand the care of this world, finances are choke you to death. Yeah, right. Other things in your life will destroy you. A uh, 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 wayside child, or a, a, a young that's gone astray, or, or a loved one that you're having problem with, or sickness, it'll destroy you. Yeah, amen, brother. Here's an interesting thing I read, and I wrote it down because I thought it was very, very, listen to this. They say during the war, Gulf War, some of you weren't born during the Gulf War, I know, what are you living? <laughs> but it said during the Gulf War that Iraq was shooting what they call Scud missiles toward Israel. And they said that they had warned that of the devastation it would have on the Israelite, the Israelite people. And uh, people panicked. The government was giving out gas masks to the Israelite citizens. And they said on the first day they locked in Scud missiles. They said a great, great death toll was recorded of the Israelites. But there's something the scientists made a discovery. That was very interesting to me, and I think it would be interesting to you. Said the death rate was the highest among the Israelites on the first day of the attack of those scud missiles. And they done a study on that, and they concluded this. A lot of those citizens didn't die because of the injury sustained from the scud missiles. A lot of them died of heart attacks brought on by fear and worry. But listen to this, that ain't the end of the story. Hmm. They say the day after the first strike by Iraq, it proved to be less catechismic than what they thought it was going to be. And after that, the death rate dropped. Hmm. Said so during the following week, there were 17 more attacks. But the death rates did not increase because it were relatively normal, the death rates. You know what it was, folks? That destroyed them people, made them people get burned out. It was the psychological impact of the missiles, not the physical impact that claimed the majority of the victims. In other words, worry killed them. Yeah. Worry destroyed them. Yeah. A lot of times the attack we think is coming against us, we think it's going to be big, but it ain't big what we expect. Yeah, right. And as we find out, 
that it's not as grave as we thought, we'll kind of be calm. But see, these folks is worried to death. Not one missile hit them. Not one bullet hit them. They died of heart attack. Yeah. Because of worry. Because of worry. Many people tonight, I really believe these folks, have died a very young death because of worry. Yeah. A lot of men, a lot of women, and young in their tribe, certain things have came in their life. And instead of them, may not even been saved, they didn't know how to cope with it, and they worried themselves to death. Yeah. They either killed themselves, committed suicide, or they drank themselves to death, or they took themselves to death, or took an overdose of drugs and got out of the future. Yeah. And you all know some people, I know people, that have done that. But actually worry will choke us to death. It'll choke the very juice out of our joy, folks. Yeah. If we allow it to. That's why Peter said this. Peter said, cast it all your care upon him. Mm -hmm. For he cares for you. That's right. Hebrews 13, 5, I like this. Amen. Hey, now let not let your conversation, let, let your conversation be without covetousness and be with content. We set the thing that you have for you said, I will, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. You ever read that back and what it said back in the same thing that for Thee forsake nor thee leave, never will I. Amen. <laughs> Remember, he's by our side. Listen, I've learned in the last month or two, he's right with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you go. And I don't tell you what, but I was I, I was born in a large family. They were eight boys and two girls, but three girls. Two of them died before I was born at infancy, in the age of in the state of infancy. But there was really eight of us that I remember. But I'll tell you what, one thing about it, young siblings will fuss. And sometimes they will fight. Yep. Can I get a witness on that fact? Amen. Amen. But one thing about it, we always there for each other. Hey. What uh, we would like this, you jump on one of us, you jump on all of us. Right. And that's exactly what the devil wants us to, he wants us to think, hey, God ain't gonna be there, God ain't gonna help you. And the Bible says he's my strong high tower. Yeah. He's my hiding place. Yes. He said we get in the secret place of the shadow of the moon of Almighty God. Yeah. Hey, hey buddy. But we see here, folks, he wants to give it all to him. If you worry all the time, that would rob you, you peace. Yeah. You can't change anything anyway by your worry. You know that? Worrying does not change nothing. It just makes yeah. things worse on you. Amen. It don't, it. It don't change anything. Preacher, I can't help it. It is hard not to sometimes. I'm not going to throw off of it and make you feel like you're a bad person because you worry a lot. Because it's not, it's not easy. It's not easy. To, because I tell you what, the devil, he'll, especially when you're by yourself, listen to me, if you're home by yourself, he'll start feeding you garbage in your ear. And you don't watch out, you'll start listening, start, start leaving. Yeah, amen. That's good for you. We're not to worry because of a master we have. As God's people, we got a master to take care of us. Even Matthew said, therefore, Matthew 6, 25 said, Therefore I say to you, take no thought for your life, for what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not life more than meat and body than raiment? Like I said a while ago, worry will never lead us closer to God to a solution. It all will create more problems. Worry will not change the past or the future, but it will make you miserable today. Yeah. It won't change nothing. Proverbs says this in Proverbs 12:25. It says, "Heaviness in the heart of a man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad." That's good scripture, ain't it? Amen. That word heaviness in Proverbs means worry, fear, or anxious care. We don't need to worry because of our Heavenly Father that we have, we don't. And you know if He takes care of the bugs, He'll take care of you. Amen. Amen. 
You know, we take care of these animals in the wilderness, in the woods, and the birds, and all these. He could have left out snakes, but he didn't. Amen. Anyway. <laughs> Amen. But he cared for the bird and the flowers. He'll take care of you. He didn't die for the bird and the flowers. He'd have to be you. Right. Right. Amen. He supplies your need. Yes, he does. According to his riches and glory. Amen. In other words, I heard a preacher say, if I like God signing a blank check, said, I'll take care of everything. Everything you need, I'll take care of you. He didn't say always what you want. Now, sometimes we get that, people get that mixed up. You need food and clothing. You don't need to be a candle. Amen. Somebody. Amen. 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 Ain't that right? That's right. Yeah, that's right. But the Bible said, Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not neither thee reap. Neither gather nor gather the, in the barn, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are oh, you much better than they? I say yes. Mm -hmm. Which you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to your stature. I want to take you thought for Amy. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil and out neither they spin. Yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory is not arrayed as one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is uh, which today is and tomorrow is and cast in the oven, shall he, shall he not much more close you? Oh, you little faith. We may worry about what's in the future, but God tells us to trust Him with all our cares today. Yes. If my light bill gets paid, Brother Phil, the church pays my light bill, would God give the church the money to pay my light bill? Amen. Right. If God, God, God sends you a paycheck, it's Him that sends it. That's right. right. So if He's will not to send it, He won't get one. Amen. That's right. But He knows. He knows what, he knows what, we, what we need. He knows that we're a needy creature. He knows that outside of His help, we're hopeless and helpless. You know what worry is? It's inconsistent with having faith. In other words, uh, worry is inconsistent with having faith. And you know what worry really is? This is what I'm saying. It's a characteristic of unbelief. Yeah. When we say we get worried, don't trust God, we say God can't take care of me. Yeah. But we see here, the Bible said to be careful for nothing, but be prayerful for everything. Yeah. Pray. Pray anything. You got to say, pray for anything specific. If you need a new pair of shoes, pray God, I need a new pair of shoes. If you say, preacher, that's good to know. God wants us to specify. He wants us to pray specific prayers. Many times, all we do is pray generalized praying instead of really uh, specific praying. And God wills us to do that. He wants us to do that. Yeah. He's interested in the very smallest need I have and you have. You remember that? Any need you have, he's interested in. You know what prayer is? The prayer is an act of devotion and worship. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Prayer and petition has to be mingled with prayer. You've been praying, been down, and I've been praying before. I've got down lows on my and get to praying, and all of a sudden, business will pick up around the house. God will begin to bless before you know what I'm praising him. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Prayer is the, the way of worshiping. Let me tell you, God's word is his way of communicating with us, but our prayer is our way of communicating with him. Yeah, amen. Amen. <coughs> There's three things we remember we need to remember when we pray. And I I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop here in a minute. Remember this when you pray. And it'll help if you listen to my listen to this. Remember God's love He has for you. And He wants the very best for you. Remember that. Yeah. What you think is best for you, what God thinks is best for you is maybe a whole lot different different story. Right. And remember this when you pray. Remember the wisdom of God is enough to know what's best for you. And also remember this, but one of the most important things of this. Remember, remember the power of God which can bring to pass 
what's best for you. How many times we try to answer our own prayers? Yeah. How many times we try to go and work and do our own thing to try to, we don't need to help God. God don't need me and God and mine. We won't help me. That's more. right. That's right. We ask God to help in a situation. We stick our nose in it and mess everything up. Somebody help us. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. We ask for God to bring that prodigal home. When the prodigal left home, the daddy didn't run after him. He just let him go. Yeah. That's right. He put him in the father's hand. Yeah. He knew that God knew, the Father knew, the Lord knew exactly what best, and He knew He would accomplish that because He trusted Him in how faith He was. Yeah. That's what we need to learn to do tonight, friend. Yeah. Quit trying to test your own prayers and give it to God and let Him have it. Amen. 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 That's good preaching. What we need to do? We ain't going to make a mess anyway. That's right. And I pray the way we pray, the mood we're in depends. It, 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 the right kind of prayer depends on the mood we're in. Yeah. Do you know the carnal Christians are ungrateful, unthankful, and they are unmindful of what God's done for them? They never thank the Lord for what they done, God done for them, but they gripe because they ain't got what they think they need. Somebody yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 I'm grateful. I'm thankful for everything I got. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Hey, let me tell you what I I, I wouldn't have nothing. Everything he got, he gave to me. He yeah. gave to me. Yeah. Let me yeah. tell you, you yeah. just thank God for everything you got, from the clothes on your back, to yes. the food on your table, to the house you live in, to Amen. the job you got, to the health you have. Yes, Amen. 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 I believe me. It could be taken away from you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. You know what is God good for to pray about every to pray about everything? Mm -hmm. I want to ask you something. I want you to be honest. You that are married, I want you to be honest. Start to raise your hand. Just contemplate. How many of us really prayed about marrying our spouse? I, I would dare say probably none of us did. But ain't you glad God still had mercy on us to give a good baby? Amen. 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 But we didn't pray about everything. Everything you need. Yes. Preach that shit don't stop. When you were a little boy, little girl, when you you with your mom and daddy, when you were in your, your mama's house, some of you still are. And when you want something, need something, you just mumble around and you say, Daddy, Mama, I need this, Dad. And, and, and they may not be able to get it right then. And, but eventually they'll get it if you need it. If you don't, they'll say you don't need that. You don't need it. You may get mad, but you know they're telling the truth. <laughs> we never need to underestimate the power of prayer. And brother, I, I'll tell you what, I saw that come to pass in the last two months. Don't ever underestimate the power of prayer. That's right. That's right. The prayer of the God people baffled a lot of people in Pine North Carolina. I tell yeah. you that. That's <laughs> Amen. It, it, it surprised a lot of people. But it didn't surprise me. Amen, preacher. Right. Yeah. Let me tell you. No, let me tell you. We didn't understand. Don't ever underestimate the power of prayer. How many of y'all been in a place where you didn't know where the next meal was coming, or the next how the bill was going to get yeah. paid, or if you never going to make it? But yeah. God, yeah. help you. Hey, God, you hey, never underestimate the power hey, of prayer. Amen. Amen, preacher. Praise God. Bless the Lord. Touch him. I'll tell you what, there have been many times, folks, listen to this. There's many, many times people have been urged by the Holy Ghost to pray for somebody. Maybe will God wake you up in the middle of the night and pray for somebody. Yeah. And they did, and later on they found out the very time they prayed for them, <laughs> God took care of them. Yeah. With the need. It was told you to go to a missionary in Africa. He had an appointment to preach at another village. And there was a way you could go through it a long way. But there was a way to go through. You could go all the way through a field. A short way to the mission he was preaching at. Well, it was very notorious. If anybody crossed there, there would always be a stampede of rhinoceros. And he would take the chance. He said, Lord, i got to get double B leg. He walked across there. got halfway across. He heard a rumble with Phil. Phil. And he said, and he held him out and began to pray. He heard that rumble. He prayed, get prayed, get prayed. And then it faded out. 
Said he will open his eyes and said he saw ride on tracks all around him. <laughs> that ain't the story. <laughs> and there's a lady in America who church sponsored that missionary. And he came in on he came in on a furlough one time and came to the church. And began to take and she came up to him and said, Brother so and so said, I want to let you know. Few, few, about a year back, I had a certain urge to pray for you one night. God woke me up and I prayed for you. Mm -hmm. He said, ma'am, about what time was it? Yeah. She told him it was the very time he was going across that bed. <laughs> <laughs> so if God ever urges you, brothers, yeah. just to cry to pray for somebody, you yeah. better do it because there's a reason behind this. Yeah. Yeah. Pray for them. Amen. When he said that, I felt chill bump on top of chill bump right there. I said, hey, God knows, God knows, God has yeah. to pray. Yes, we need to learn to understand, don't ever underestimate the power of your prayer. Yeah, amen. Right. Yeah, amen. brother. Amen. I'm going to tell you what, folks. I'm going to quit there because I believe I need to quit there. <laughs> But I have to get to getting good. Right? Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. I want to go ahead and thank you some more candy than that. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Amen. Hey, 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 hey. But always remember this: is the way we can have peace in this world we're living. I'm glad I got it tonight. Hey, yes. I'm not going to worry in my mind. That's right. Worry about. I, I guess if God does something for me, folks, and I'm devil yeah. it over. Yeah. I don't know about tomorrow. Hmm. But I know who's going to host tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And I know yes, God's sir. going to take care of me. Hmm. <laughs> Do thick and thin. Yes, He will. I, I'm a living proof that God can work miracles in people's lives. Yes, sir. Amen. I had a lady text me after I got, well, I was in the hospital. Thank you. New York. Brother David's sister-in-law texted me. And she told me, said, Preacher Richie, I'm glad you're healed up. You got a healing you. And said, we have prayed for you. Mm -hmm. And said, we're so glad that you had an impact on our lives and our children's lives. And said, well, Preacher Ricky, whether you know or not, you're a walking miracle. Amen. I thought, well, what's, that? what's new? What's new? I don't know. <coughs> yeah. How to have peace in this world we're living in. This world we're living in now ain't like it was when I was going to the only uh, The only violation people have in school is, I mean, them red little boys that bring them driving no pickup trucks in there, brother, they'd have her guns and her gun rack in the back glasses. They would. It yeah. wasn't nothing for these boys walking around with a pocket knife. I only tell you, once in a while you'd have a little scuffle or fight in the, in the school and you wouldn't have no games shooting. You wouldn't have no people coming in the school shooting somebody up and killing a bunch of people. Yep. And time has changed. But even in the midst of all this turbulence and trouble and tribulation, we should have peace. Yeah. Jesus said in this world you should have tribulation. He said, be a good cheer. Yeah. I've overcome the world. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for the night service. Yes. Thank, thank you, Lord, for letting us preach, giving us liberty. God, be, give yes. us energy to preach tonight, God. Oh, God. And I pray.